We've had a number of potential nannies come through already. Do you think you can manage? Of course. I'm Malcolm. Hi. I'm the grocery boy. Well, grocery man. <laughs> Lead the way. Allow me to introduce Mr. Hilter. And this is our son, Brad. <laughs> Music gives him so much joy. Brahms is not like other children. It is very important that you follow these rules. Be good to him and he'll be good to you. No offense, Brahms, but you kind of creep me out. Okay. I needed someone else to see it. To see what? If you leave him alone, they don't give you a sign. This is like some kind of magic trick, right? It's not a trick. Tell me about the real Brahms. He was downright strange. A little girl from town used to come out here to play with Brahms. They found her body in the woods. By the time the police arrived, the place was up in flames. Brahms didn't make it out. Hello? No one's been out there for years. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Brahms? It's not safe in this house. You don't understand what's happening. He's alive. Be good to him, won't you? So over the last couple of days, a few requests began to trickle in that I take a look at a trailer for a movie called The Boy. And now, having seen the trailer, I can see why those requests were starting to trickle in, because this is a very interesting movie indeed. And Styx Entertainment, by the way, is a new distributor on the block trying to be the next Lionsgate Summit or Open Road. Lionsgate and Summit, by the way, combine forces to become almost a major studio at this point. Uh, but Styx is again new to the scene. But they seem to be very good at picking movies. They have uh, The Secret in Their Eyes coming up. They had a very strong hit with The Gift uh, over the summer, well, late in the summer. Uh, and this looks like it might be another strong winner for them. Uh, very genre-y. And it's a uh, it's a little bit of a glossy highbrow horror film, and I think there's definitely room for those. Uh, you know, Crimson Peak, though, uh, crashed and burned at the box office this weekend, but still, uh, this movie seems a little less risky. It's surely cheaper, uh, and when movies are cheaper, they are, of course, um, less of a risk. But this movie, I think, I think it's all going to depend on whether or not that creepy doll comes to life at some point during the movie. Like at the very end, they shell out, the, you know, talk about being cheap. I would say that even because you, even though you want to keep your budget down, I think it's crucial for a movie like this to save a little bit of its budget, even if it's like a quarter of the budget, right? Even if it's a huge chunk of the budget to pay to animate that doll at the very end of the movie. Then you have like a ring-like moment, uh, which kind of like, uh, makes the whole movie worthwhile, right? And, and generates a lot of word of mouth. Like, wait for it, wait for it, holy crap, that was awesome. Uh, now, of course, it's also, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, one of the reasons they should be able to save a decent chunk of the budget uh, for those visual effects is because this is shot on location, uh, or at least it seems to be, and I would assume for such a small film that it is because they can't afford to build these sets. But what a gift that location is, right? I mean, that house is spectacular. It's one of those things that a new filmmaker comes across and is like, you know what, I should just write something that goes with this house. Uh, this actually was written by someone else and directed by a different director, so this is just a situation where you know they were able to match a great location to the material, but still, if you're an aspiring filmmaker, oftentimes access to a spectacular location can really be the inspiration you need for your first movie because it solves a lot of your problems. Uh, also, of course, there are obvious comparisons to 
Annabelle, uh, which was also about a creepy doll. And that creepy doll uh, never never came, uh, uh, well, I don't want to give anything away in the movie, but that, that's, that's a very good movie. I really enjoyed Annabelle, and it did very well at the box office. Uh, but Annabelle was a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, plussed in terms of production values, and like, uh, it was coming off of The Conjuring, so it had that going for it. This is more of an indie film, so I think it needs that ring-like moment at the end where the doll comes to life. But I'm very impressed. I'm very, very impressed with this. It looks like a really solid winner. I kind of almost wish it was coming out for Halloween, uh, and it might have benefited from a day and date release. You know, if this was playing on streaming uh, on Halloween, I would be all uh, all up for it. It looks very, very good. But I'm curious, what do you think? What do you like about this? Uh, and what if the doll doesn't come to life? Do you think that uh, the movie will have cheaped out to its detriment, or do you think it'll it'll be okay? Uh, also, by the way, when I cover Annabelle, you might recall this. Annabelle is actually based on a, a male doll that Chucky, Child's Play, is based on. Uh, and that doll's actually very... I think that doll's real uh, life name... You know, I didn't want to say it. It's such a creepy story. We, the doll who shall go unnamed. Uh, but that's a really weird story. So this is kind of playing off in that. And I guess that's my other question for you. Uh, what do you think? Should Annabelle be upset? Should The Conjuring, because they want to make an Annabelle 2, by the way, that was recently announced. Should they be like, you're totally moving in on our haunted doll territory. There's only room for so many of those movies at the multiplex. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review. And thank you everyone who requested I review this because I'm very happy that it, uh, you got it on my radar. I look forward to continuing the conversation down below and you can check out some other episodes right now. 